Hello, I'm Rabbi Bolton, Tuvia Bolton from Kfarqa Chabad, and this is going to be a crash class in how to make the Seder night. How to make the Seder night. A lot of you um, might be making the Seder night alone, right? Wrong. No one will ever make the Seder night alone. God is with everyone, and in fact, that is the whole message and the whole the main big gift of Passover, that no Jew is alone. God took each Jew out individually. It says in the first of the Ten Commandments, I am God that took you, singular. It took you out of Egypt. So usually we don't feel it and we don't think about it. And maybe we don't even think we need it. But we do need it. And it's there. And this Passover, we can turn our minds to it. The feeling, when you feel that God is with you, it's a very happy feeling. A very comforting feeling and a very empowering feeling that as long as you're alive someone once told me i asked uh, talking to a, a, a gentile in america we were having a nice conversation and i said to him you know how are you feeling he said as long as i'm on the ground and the ground is not on me i'm happy so that means going out of egypt a jew can be even happier even if he's on the ground but our job is to transform the ground, the whole world, to make something, uh, how do you say, uh, fruitful. As we see in the end of the Shemona Esrei, my soul is like dirt to everyone. That from me, everyone will grow. Grow up. Okay, so pass, Passover. The Jewish people were like little babies. God took us out of Egypt. We were a nation like a fetus inside of the womb of the mother. That the head was between the knees, totally unconscious of everything. And that's why, by the way, the Korban, the Pesach sacrifice, they would bring a sheep or a goat and they would put the head between their knees. Rosho al Korah it says. And they would sacrifice it that way in the Holy Temple. Okay, we don't have that now, but we do have matzah and we have four cups of wine. So let's talk about making the Seder Pesach. And the nighttime, you'll be able to do it like a professional. You'll impress your wife, your, your children, and you'll know what to do. So here we go. Ready? Usually grandpa is there, and he does it himself, and he does it for you. With such a beautiful. This year, you're going to be just you and God together. You're going to be Moses, and you're going to take everybody out of Egypt. How do we start tonight? First of all, number one is when you go to, when you pray. You're praying in synagogue, and your wife should pray at home and light the candles. You pray in synagogue, an unusual thing, you have to remember to say, Yala V'yavo, to pray Yala V'yavo. And also to remember to <clears throat> the, the w- woman. The woman, when she's uh, at, at, at home, she should light the candles. And she says, Lahad Likner Shel Yom Tov and Shech Yano. And those people living outside of Israel, this is going to be a special year for you. But in any case, you also sh- the woman also says Shech Yano the second night. And you people will have to remember in the daytime, the people living outside of Israel, to make an Eruv Tavshilin. Make that Eruv Tavshilin. If you don't know what it is, ask your rabbi or ask someone. Look it up on on, on, uh, on Wikipedia. You'll see it on Google. Eruv Tavshilin. Another very important thing is remember to take Chala. Chala from the Matzah. Remember to take Chala. From the matzah, you don't know what that is, ask all this your rabbi, you have to take a portion from the matzah. Usually they do it before they sell it to you. Remember the matzah has to be matzah shmura. Matzah shmura. It has to be matzah shmura. It cannot be ordinary, whatever it's called, manashevitz or what is normal, run-of-the-mill, yearly matzah. It has to be special matzah that's called matzah shmura. It has to have a, a hechshra stamp on it. Okay, you're going to, now you're going to, on the on, on Passover, you're going to eat these matzahs. And you're going to drink four cups of wine. Four cups of wine. The cup should be like about one ounce big, a little bit bigger than an ounce. The cup. When you eat the matzah and when you drink the wine, remember this. You have to lean over to the left, to your left. Even if you're a lefty, you have to lean over to your left. You drink the wine, eat the matzah. If you forget to lean over and you drink the wine then really you have to go back and, and drink it again. But we don't. Only on the second cup. There's an outside reason not to make extra blessings. The second cup, if you don't, the second cup of wine, which that's the most important cup of the night, 
That's the night that you fill it up before you say the Haggadah of Passover and you drink it right after you say the Haggadah of Passover before you eat the matzah. If you don't drink it leaning over, you have to drink it again. Second cup, don't lean over, drink it again. The same thing with the matzah. If when you eat the matzah, you don't lean over, you have to eat the matzah again. Remember to lean over. You can practice it at home, the matzah. <clears throat> if when you eat the, what's called the, 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 the korach, the, the, the matzah with the sandwich with the more, you also have to lean over. But if you don't, you don't have to eat it again. The cups of wine, when you drink the wine, you have to drink it within, I mean, when you, I'm sorry, when you eat the matzah. When you eat the matzah, you have to eat the matzah within four minutes. Four minutes. Some people say a little bit longer. Try four minutes. When you drink the cup of wine, you should try to drink the whole cup and finish the whole cup at once. Maybe you can take a little break or something, but you shouldn't. You should try to drink the whole cup at once. Matzah, eat within four minutes. Wine, leaning over. Matzah, leaning over. Wine at one time. Full cup. Better to take a small cup and drink it all than take a big cup. You can drink uh, uh, grape juice. Drink juice, but it's better not to. You can, but it's better not to. So what you can do is put a little bit of wine in it. So. Okay. In the nighttime, and, 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 and I'm sorry, the ladies don't light the candles, right? <clears throat> you come home, and you make kiddush. Kiddush. You take the first cup of wine, and you make kiddush. It's written in the... And the men say shehechianu. After they finish the kiddush, you say shehechianu. The women don't say it. There's sometimes, sometimes women make kiddush. And, uh, in Chabad, generally, the custom is the women do not make kiddush. They drink their own wine. Some people say they don't even make the first blessing on the wine. But everyone's supposed to make the blessing on each cup of wine. Anyway, if the women do decide to make kiddush, they don't say shehechianu because they already said it when they lit the candles. Be careful. So you come home and you make kiddush. And you lean over and you drink the cup of wine. That's what everybody does. And then you start the night of the Seder. Right? Start the night of the Seder. One thing. Before you say the Kiddush, everyone sits down and you say the 15 steps that are going to be in this night. 15 steps. Kadesh Urachatz, Karpas Yachatz, Magid Rochza, Motzi Matza. Moror korech, shulchan orech, svon korech, svon berach, halir nirza. What does this mean? You come home, you make kiddush. That's what I said. After that, you wash your hands and you eat the karpas. Now, what is this karpas? Let me just show you over here. I have a picture. Oh, here you go, rabbis. Listen to this. Watch this. Oh, picture. Pick. Sure. What does this look like? These are the three matzahs. I even have a pointer here. Here are your three matzahs. What's your plate is supposed to look like? You put three matzot on the bottom. Let's see if you got to move this right to left. Three matzot, whole matzot on the bottom. Cover them over with a covering. You put bitter herbs over here and bitter herbs over here. Oh, 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 tilting this. Bitter herbs over here and bitter herbs over here. And then you put an egg on your top left, egg on your top left, a chicken neck on your top right, a piece of onion or parsley, some people use parsley, on your bottom left below the egg, and what's called charoset, which is ground up apples and pears and nuts over here. This is shaped in three, in the, like two triangles. And those of you who know Kabbalah, or if you want to know Kabbalah, or you don't know Kabbalah, you just want to impress your guests, this course, according to the, what's called the Ten Svirot of God, the three matzot correspond to Chachma, Chachma, Bina, and Dat, Chachma, Bina, and Dat. This is, corresponds to the right side, is the bone. This is Chesed, Gavura, on the left, Tiferet, yeah. Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. Very good. And then the, the, the covering is Malchut, the covering over the thing. That's what's called Malchut. A little bit of Kabbalistic ideas over here. Suffice it to say that when we went out of Egypt, we took all of these powers of Egypt, namely 
uh, intellect, kindness, power, mercy that they used for bad things, and now we're going to use them for good. So you come home, you put the three matzah down. Really, this should be finished. This should be made before you make the kiddush. But in any case, you make kiddush. You put three matzot down, you put a covering over the matzot. It's a good thing also to put the plastic over that. And then you put the bone on your right, the egg on the top left. You put bitter herbs in the middle. Then you put the haroset over here and the whatever is onion on your left. And then another time. So it comes out three triangles. You put it up. Now you're ready to start the middle. That's kaddish. Urachats, you wash your hands. Carpus, you eat this carpus you take from the onion or whatever you have. Dip it a little bit in salt water, which you should have prepared before the holiday. Yachats, then you go back and you you uh, you break the middle matzah. Break the middle matzah. Take the middle matzah out. And the big piece, you put aside for the afikoman. Some people hide the afikoman. Chabad doesn't hide the afikoman. Some Chabad, we have a custom to break the afikom into five pieces. It explains a Kabbalistic reason over here why. In any case, that's the afikom, and you're going to break it from the middle piece. Then you pour the second cup, and you do magid. You do the whole Haggadah, which we'll talk about a little bit next time. Then after you finish the whole Haggadah, you drink the second cup, leaning over. Then you go and wash your hands for bread. Chabad, we wash our hands, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's it. And then you pick up all the three matzahs. The middle one is broken, right? You pick up all three matzahs, and you make a blessing. Hamotzi lechem You let the bottom matzah drop, so now you're holding a broken matzah and the top matzah. Some people say the, the mitzvah of eating matzah has to be on a broken one. So lechem oni. Then you make the second blessing, which is called bruch Hashem, aloktinu melech and you lean over. That's motzi, a motzi lechem ino oritz. You make a blessing on the bread. You let the bottom one drop, and you say, Bruch atah Hashem, melech olam, asher kidishon ha'ba mitzvot tov v'tzivano, al achilat matzah. Then you eat the matzah. Lean over, and you should try to eat a half of the top one, and a half of it. It's called the kazayat. A kazayat is something like three ounces. You lean over, and you try to eat both the top, half of the top, and the whole middle one, which is only also a half. Lean over and try to eat it in four minutes. Four minutes. Now, when you're eating this matzah, you have to be thinking a few things. Number one, this is the food of faith. You're taking this matzah. It's, a, it's the one only mitzvah in Judaism. They used to have the Pesach offering, but we don't have it that you take it inside of you, except for learning Torah. Learning Torah, you also take inside of you. You take it inside of you. It's a commandment of God. It's God's will right now. It's not it's something that God did back there, or it's our, just our heritage, or it's a, a nice custom, which is all those things also. But the main thing is the matzah is God's will. It's a commandment. And when you eat the matzah, you're putting it inside of yourself. Matzah is called the food of faith. We discussed that in the previous ones. But the faith goes inside of you, and it's also called the food of healing, in Israel, they both come on the same day, faith and healing. And outside of Israel, the faith is the first day, and the healing is the second day. Eating matzah heals you. To this day, they don't know what is the corona exactly, what's going to heal it. Well, here it is. It's going to heal. Jews have been eating it for 3,332 years. I mean, they, they actually, they made, the first year, they made a Pesach offering. So this is the 3,000. 333rd Seder Pesach the Jewish people have been making this year. That after you eat the matzah, <coughs> eat it in four minutes, then you have to eat the moror. The moror was the bitter herbs. We use here in Chabad, our custom is, we use over here, we use the um, uh, lettuce and horseradish. Put a little bit of horseradish inside, lettuce. Altogether, it should be one kazayat big, like about three ounces. And then you lean, you don't lean over. I'm sorry, you do not lean over, and you eat it. Try to eat that also within four minutes. Bitter. Life is bitter. 
mora is the is the numerical value of death. So it's so to speak, we are consuming, we're getting rid of of death, we're transforming it. Which is that's what's going to happen when the dead rise. Which is going to happen. The dead are right. That's one of the basic principles of Judaism that the dead are going to rise. Then after that, you take the bottom matzah and you put this in the bottom matzah. The same thing is here. Put it in the bottom matzah and you say this is what Hillel used to do in the time of the Holy Temple. He would put matzah and more together and you lean over and you eat it also. Again, I want to say. If you forget to lean over on the second cup, which is what you drank right before you ate the matzah, you have to drink that second cup again. If you forgot to lean over when you ate the matzah, not this uh, this uh, sandwich, you forgot to lean over when you ate the matzah, you have to eat the matzah again. But you're supposed to lean over for every cup that you drink and for all the matzah that you eat. Good, okay. After that, we make the meal. Festive, nice meal. Then you can drink more wine if you want to. You can eat more matzah. A lot of people in Chabad, we have the custom that we eat the matzah and then we clean it off the table. We don't have any more matzah on the table. Because there is a, a, a very, very firmly based and very crazy uh, custom by all the Hasidim and that they do not let the matzah touch any water or liquid or no smearing butter on it, etc. No. They don't do why, because there's a, a strange law in in, 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 in in Passover, and that is chametz. Chametz is tremendously forbidden, tremendously forbidden. If a little tiny speck of chametz falls into a huge vat of cholent, enough for the entire Israeli army, a little the whole cholent is forbidden. It's all forbidden if it falls in on Passover. Calls you a little bit is forbidden. So therefore, when you're baking the matzah, it could be, even though the chances are of like a billion to one, but like I say, if one piece of chametz falls into a billion times of cholent, the whole thing is forbidden. So it, it's a billion to one. Maybe when you made the matzah, there was a little bit of flour that the water didn't get on. And now when you dip it into the water or liquid or whatever, the water will touch that and it'll become, God forbid, chametz, and you'll eat hummus. So, I mean, it's a really far shot. But on the other hand, Passover is a far shot. It's a farther shot that the Jews would get out of Egypt. That was totally impossible. So you want to go get out of Egypt, you have to pay attention to the far shots. A billion to one is much, much better than zero. So therefore, we have to... <clears throat> the Jews did get out of Egypt. In fact, that's where we're sitting here. And the chances were much more than a billion to one that they would get out. And so we also have to be careful for this billion to one. Maybe there's a little bit. If you don't, if you're not careful, if you dip it in because your father did it, don't worry about it. It's okay. You're, you're in the, in the nine, what is it? 999,999,999 people that are on the safe side. Okay. On the, on the, on the, I'm sorry, in the, in the normal side. Okay, then that we say we say Kaddish, Then we have the uh, the shulchan orach, eat the shulchan orach, and the last thing we eat in the shulchan orach, we eat the, 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 in the shulchan orach. That means the, the meal. The last thing that we eat is the afikomen. The afikomen was that matzah that you hid. Remember from the beginning, you broke off from the middle. <clears throat> and by the way, a nice, a nice little story I'll tell you that the, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, when he was young. So he took out the middle matzah and he broke it off and he measured which one was bigger. The bigger one, he would break into five, right? So he, which he was measuring which one was bigger. So his father told him that big, that you have to measure it to see if it's big, is not really big. And the, the greatness of a person, a person, when is a person great? When you don't have to measure him against anybody, when he's just himself, then he's connected to God. And that is great. Nothing is greater than that. Everybody has something great inside of them. But when you measure it to somebody else, so then it's bigger than. It's not just really big. Okay, here we are. We have just eaten what which we call safun. Safun means the matzah that you hid away in the beginning. That corresponds to the Pesach offering. The Pesach offering in the time of the temple used to be eaten the last thing. After the meal was already finished, everybody was satisfied. It was called alasoba. They ate it when everyone was satisfied. And this also you have to lean over when you eat. You have to lean over when you eat the 
Afi Komer. And then after that, you make bruch, you pour the fourth cup, and you also pour over here, you pour the cup of Elijah the prophet, prime Elijah the prophet, and you bless, make the bruch at the mazon, remember to say yalav yavo, and then you drink that cup, and you fill up a fourth cup, that was the third cup, you fill up the fourth cup, and you say the big halil, and then after that, you finish the fourth cup, and you sing, and you dance, and you're happy, much as you can. Some people have the custom of saying Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs, eight beautiful pair of chapters from King Solomon. Very, very beautiful. If you, it's better if you sort of read it beforehand than try to translate it. <clears throat> so I'll tell you a little story because I have a couple of minutes. Do I have a couple of minutes? Why not? I'll give you a couple of minutes. And I'll tell you a little story about the night of Passover. So there it is. You've, you've read the 15 stages. You've gone through the 15 stages. You drank four cups of wine. You feel pretty good. You ate three matzahs. You ate the ate the, the as much as the matzahs as you could. The the whole top one and the whole middle one and the the the, the, the top one is left. You still left the half of the top one, and you ate it and you ate a nice meal. You're sitting with God together at the as I said. And if you're sitting alone, don't worry about it. Dance, dance, be happy. Forget about <clears throat> all of your limitations. We're going out of limitations tonight. Going out of Egypt. And God is with us all the time. So there's a story, <coughs> tell you a story, and this is, we'll end with this story. There was, after the Iron Curtain fell in Russia, so everybody could leave, people going back, and Chabad started going to, into Russia and looking for Jews. There were Jews there, there, there were 70 years that Judaism had been quashed, had been, there were Jews that didn't know they were Jews. There were Jews that the, the, their mother didn't know she was Jewish, and the grandmother vaguely knew she was Jewish. So they went and looked for Jews. And amazingly enough, Jews, even four generations, somehow or other, they, they still, there are Jews that still know that they're Jews. Even though they, they, he's not circumcised and his father wasn't circumcised, his grandfather was a, was a Bundist and his father was a communist and he's, and he's a, an atheist, whatever he is. A... <clears throat> okay, so uh, this Chabad, so Chabad went over there and a lot of boys went, a lot of them didn't speak Russian. So they got people who either started to get closer to Chabad that spoke Russian, and they would go with these young fellows, you know, fellows of 18 years old, whatever, and they would they would go with the shaliach, with somebody who was uh, already established there in Russia. I heard the city was some city near Vitebsk. That's how I heard the story. So the, <clears throat> they went, um, I guess uh, Vitebsk is already, is already Ukraine. Anyway, they went to Ukraine, white Russia, and... And regular Russia, so they, they went, they found the city, there was maybe 10,000, who knows how many people living in the city, and they went to the mayor, right, this young, young fellow, American fellow, and the Chabad representative, that he already knew how to speak Russian a little bit, <coughs> and they went to the mayor, and they said, listen, we're Jews, we're religious Jews, we want to make a, a party for our, our, our Prosnik, our holiday, and uh, we want to... How many Jews are in their town? I don't know. I have no, absolutely no idea how many there are. Maybe how many? He says, I don't know. Jews, who knows if there's Jews? Maybe, I don't know. A couple. We want to make a big party, invite everybody. Will there be food? Yeah, there'll be food. 500 people will come. Maybe more, maybe less. 500. Good. Have you got any sort of a building to have 500 people? He says, no. No building? So we have in a stadium outside, you know, but you, will, you want to you make it outside. Maybe it'll rain. Who knows what'll happen? He said, well, when we were driving in, we saw this big, huge building that looked like it was all, you know, there was weeds growing all over on the outside. He says, oh, that's the, that's the, the, the main meeting place for the communists, but it hasn't been used already for 15 years. There's no water, there's no electricity, it's all terrible in there. And people even broke in, I think there's all, it's dirty. He said, no, we want to use that. Nah, there's no way. So they gave him a, a little bit of a bribe. In those days, the dollar was worth like a, a fortune over there. Was a, <clears throat> so he said, okay. So they got the workers and they this, and they started working. And sure enough, they, they cleaned the whole place up, and they made the kitchen kosher, and they they put the electricity back on, they turned the water back on, and they put up uh, the invitations. And sure enough, about 500 people came, 500, a lot of people. And they had the tables, and there were people that were, were helping them. They made the, 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 there was meat, food, uh, they, they shechted the, the chicken, they had chicken. And so there was meat, there was food, everybody was eating. The, 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 the young man was explaining to them, he, they, they brought, of course, the Chabad brought matzah, the matzah, and they brought wine. 
So he's explaining to them all these different steps, you know, the going out of Egypt and the faith and the, the happiness and the drinking the wine. There's four different stages of happiness and the faith. And uh, finally gets up to the fifth cup, to the cup of Elio, Elijah the prophet. So the young man says, now we're going to pour the cup of Elijah the prophet, which Elijah the prophet we believe is going to come and he will announce the redemption of the Jewish people. When the Mashiach will build the holy temple in Israel and all of the Jews will return back to their father in heaven and do the Torah and the commandments and all of them will go back to Israel. He's all excited. This one, somebody stands up from the crowd and he says, young man, uh, first of all, thank you very much for the wonderful food and the nice stories and the, the rituals and the, Jews and, the, and the trouble you've put into this. But we really appreciate it, right? Everybody, he's speaking in Russian. Of course, and this young man is translating for the, for the, the, the I'm sorry, the, the, the young man is a translator, the translating. He said, but this, what you say now about the Messiah coming and all the Jews becoming religious and going back to you, this, this is a story maybe for little children you can tell the story. For old ignorant people, but we're all intellectuals here. Here we are, you're sitting here, we're professors, doctors, lawyers, uh, authors, uh, the, we're, we're intelligent people. I mean, nothing against you personally, but uh, uh, no, don't tell that story to us. Don't expect this. We're really going to believe this. I mean, this is what you've been building up to. This is the end of the night. The young man didn't lose his, uh, his composure, and he said, my friend, I would like to ask you a question. He said, yes. He said, tell me, do you know what communism is? The man looks around like this the fellow is stu more stupid than I thought. This religion, where did he live in a box? Communism, of course, who didn't know what communism was? So we, we lived, we ate communism, we breathed communism. Communism was of everything. Everybody was communism. He said, 15 years ago there was communism. Yeah, that, you know, the, the Iron Curtain fell. 20 years ago there was communism. He says, young man, I don't understand what you're talking about. Communism was 70 years. It lasted, of course. He said, tell me, if someone would tell you, 20 years ago, that you would sit one day in the communist center command of your city and that you would make blessings to God and that you would make a Seder Pesach and say thank you to the, to the Creator, would you believe him 20 years ago? So the man started thinking. He said, Bravo. Bravo. And everyone stood and they clapped. The same way the communism fell and suddenly everyone was freed, as so also Mashiach will come and the third Beit HaMikdash will be built. It says the Zohar will come from heaven. It's already ready. And all the Jewish people will wake up and they'll transform all the communists and the atheists and this, this, and this. They'll all be transformed to a symphony, all the pain and the tears and the suffering of the Jews for thousands of years will be transformed into an amazing symphony of joy and happiness with the arrival of the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach this year. Pesach Kasher Vasameach.